So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined this Professional Development Virtual Chapter webinar. Today we will be having a session by Mickey Stewie. The session is Be a Role Model for Women in Tech Through Blogging. I'm going to get Mickey to introduce herself in a few seconds. First off, I'm just going to cover over a few of the housekeeping items. So first off, I'm just going to bring up the past community news for March 2016. So one of the things you may be aware of is that there's a conference, the Business Analytics Conference, that's being held from the 2nd to the 4th of May. In day one, we have a number of keynote speakers, and basically these are some of the top players in the industry around business analytics and visualization. You'll be able to connect and listen and learn from industry experts in Power BI, Excel, Big Data, Analytics and Visualization. There's over 60 hours of in-depth sessions and labs that you can actually follow. And also you have the capability of networking with some of the other professionals in that field around the world. So if you want to register today, please go to passbaconference.com. There is also some discount codes that I will be providing shortly for this chapter. So if you do need to register and you want a discount code, I will be providing that shortly after through the email update. As you're aware, probably there are a quite a large number of virtual chapters that pass available to you. One of those is obviously the professional development virtual chapter, but there's a, quite a few others, and you can just register for the ones of interest to yourselves and follow the different sessions that's available. Most of these, like this session today, is being recorded, and they're available for replay back at your convenience through the YouTube channels and other uh, recording options they have available to you. There's a few listing of uh, some of the dates are actually slightly out here. I'll just click to the next one. But some of the examples of recent ones that we've recently had through the virtual chapter. And as I say, there's a large number, and you'll get alerted to the upcoming events if you're a registered member for those. You're also probably aware that PASS has a large number of kind of SQL Saturday events, which is one day kind of free events to attend, usually on a Saturday, but for example, on Friday for Vienna, on April 1st, I'll be attending and speaking at that one. But generally, they're also preceded by pre-cons. Again, one-day training sessions with very low cost to be able to attend. So if you go to SQLSaturday.com, you're able to look up what's up there, register for the event, and also maybe subscribe to a pre-con that's available. And here's some of the ones for North America upcoming in April and May, and also internationally. PASS itself is an organization that's kind of pretty much uh, by volunteers. And you can go to volunteer.sequelpass.org to register your interest in becoming a volunteer. That could be one to help with the organization of events, maybe going to a SQL Saturday to help with the organization there. There's also all the virtual chapters. So myself and Howard, who's joined me today as my co-leader, we're also volunteers and we run these chapters to provide these events for you guys to learn and share with them. So you can get your volunteer hat on if you want to with that. And again, you can stay kind of involved and, and connect with other past members through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and also the main website, sequelpass.org. So don't forget to do all that. There is some additional news I'm going to share. Let me just close down this one. I'm going to switch over to some additional information that we actually have. So one of the things that we get to the right window is there's an upcoming 24 hours of pass, and this will be about the events around the 2016 release. So Cortina Analytics 2016, Azure ML, Azure HD Insights, and Hadoop. So these will be available um, as an event, I believe, later in May. At the moment, subscription, the submissions are available, so if you are interested in submitting, please do go to that website and submit there. There's additional information around some of the new con, uh, sorry, the non con process, where the change in the process is that now uh, kind of established chapter leaders and other regional mentors will become available to put their name forward, become on that, that board, and that's actually in process at the moment. 
and you say the 24 hours of pass is available and there's some additional one hour last piece of information let's get to the right screen is that we have a survey that's going to be made available i thought i had the screen up but um here we are if a member of virtual chapters we're asking you to submit your feedback through the survey that's available um, that's been sent out and there's two there's entries to go to a draw to the 2015 usb so all the general sessions that were recorded for that and we'd like to get your feedback by the 31st of march for that so i've taken enough of your time i'm now going to pass the controls over to mickey and have her introduce myself herself rather so mickey you should have controls now And while waiting for Mickey to pick that up, if you have any questions in the GoToWebinar session controls, which should be on the right hand side of your screen normally, you can put your questions into the question pane. And those will then be fielded by Howard and relayed back to Mickey uh, during the session or at the end of the session as we go. So Mickey, over to you and good luck. Okay. Good morning uh, from California. I got up uh, pretty early, so I have my cup of coffee with me, and I'm very happy to present here today. Um, I'm a senior database developer at a financial institution, and I think that's about enough for me. So we're going to get uh, started on being a role model to help uh, women in technology through blogging. So usually I ask about everybody's background, but uh, it's a little harder on a virtual chapter. So basically, I've decided you're all future bloggers, and uh, there's this FFA in America called Future Farmers of America, so I kind of um, base this slide off of that. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to go over some statistics on women and blogging and even men. Um, then we're going to go over uh, various ways or various things that you need to know in starting up your session, I'll, I'll share with you um, my adventures over the last four years of blocking as well. So why do we need to do this? Well, I found a, a report, 2009 was the uh, closest I could find to 2016, and this particular report talked about all women across all careers and how they participated in uh, social media. And you could see that more than 50% actually participate, so that's great. There's an audience out there for us to reach, but there's only 19% who actually publish blogs. So let's take a look at our specific community. I was able to gather some statistics about PASS as well as a couple of the conferences I've attended. And this is what I found about the speakers at Summit. Uh, there was a pool of 342 speakers, and only uh, 53 were women. So from that, I found that out of those 50 are bloggers, and I actually know 19 of them personally. The other ones are, might be international. I'm going to put them on my list to hopefully meet at the next summit. While there was 45% of the women speakers also blogged, there was only 25% of the men, 71 of the 289 speakers. So there's really a lot of room for men and women to improve to get more bloggers. Now I was also able to look at the attendees um, and the, I couldn't look at the names. I was just given some statistics, which is really all I wanted to do. Now, you'll notice that there's two different numbers who attended. Um, 3,325 3, were the ones that we knew what the gender was. Uh, the, the total attendees was uh, 3,500 and some change. But as you can see, we're roughly about the same for women bloggers out of those for the entire pool of women for that 2009 report. But there's still plenty of room to grow. Uh, another uh, presentation I had attended showed that there's a decline since the 80s for women participating in the career of tech. So we really need to inspire women 
to bring those numbers up. Now, I was also able to get the information about the uh, virtual chapters and the local user groups. And the virtual chapters, there's a smaller pool, but they had a higher number of bloggers. It's, you know, 6 out of 333. Well, there's 34 out of 284, but that's also a, a bit larger of a pool. Now, I attended the SQL Saturdays in Austin and Chicago, and there were very few women um, speaking. So there's another area of improvement that we could reach out to everybody. One of the other reasons why we want to start blogging is to keep women in tech. What they have found is there's people who are unhappy in their jobs uh, because of the way that they're treated. Um, it, it's hard when you're treated like a guy on a team when you're a woman. I remember in the 90s, in order to fit in, I had to act like a guy and I had to dress like a guy. And I can tell you now, I will never ever wear a men's polo or a khaki pants. I would show those lovely brown cargo pants, if you're familiar with them. Uh, because to me, that means uh, dressing like a guy. And I'm not. Um, this particular job, I had to wear business uh, casual, which is the first time since the 90s. And I'm wearing skirts. I actually look like a girl, which is kind of nice. Um, we, we also found that 56% of the women leave the job and completely leave the uh, Twenty percent leave the tech community completely. I did that twice. First time was for me. So I, I would highly recommend not being an artist during a recession. Uh, the good thing for me is I joined the SQL community because prior to that I was a, a Visual Basic programmer. C Sharp didn't exist yet. And I said I would never, ever go back into that profession. So I'm quite happy to be in the SQL space. And uh, the SQL community is very, very supportive. So that's enough with stats. What, why else would we want to do this? Well, we'd want to do this for others, to help inspire them, to give back to the community. If you haven't gotten involved in the SQL community, I highly recommend it. Um, being that you're on a virtual chapter, you've taken the first steps maybe, or you might be completely involved like Neil uh, in the SQL community. Also, you want to do it for yourselves. I find that it's helpful to document my aha moments. Those are the moments that you've really struggled with figuring out and doing research to solve a problem. I remember when I was first introduced to data warehousing, I had to figure it out on my own. I needed to figure out how to find a bridge table, uh, but I didn't know what it was called. So I researched and I researched on the pattern, and finally I found out it was called a bridge table, which made my researching easier. A bridge table is connecting two different kinds of dimensional or fact tables. And I, if you notice, I put inspire others for both uh, groups of data. To me, inspiring others for ourselves can also be very beneficial. I always uh, feel really good when someone puts a comment on my blog that says, thank you, I, I needed to know that, and it helped me on my last project. So what kind of tools do we have? Oh, before I go on, I need a coffee break. So Howard, do we have any questions yet? Hi, Vicki. Okay, no worries. So, uh, what kind of tools are available? Well, for looking for a place to blog, we have a number of them. These are the ones that I know, uh, either international or in America. If there are other ones that are out there in other countries, please email me. I would like to uh, continue to grow this list. WordPress.com is, for me, is the easiest one to get started on because it, it's already set up there. I am very jealous that you guys get to start with this one. Um, my first website I built was in 1998, um, so that I can show people pictures of um, my first child. 
And I had to do it in a little tiny text box on a website called GeoCities, which Google ended up buying. And it took me forever just to get a simple page going because I, I was just learning HTML. One of the other ones that is available is LinkedIn.com. Unfortunately, I find that to find posts. I get a summary every now and of posts. I've only gotten one of my colleagues to show up on there once, and now I can't find his posts on there. And it could just be I'm not familiar with the website for finding posts, but to me that, that's a drawback. Now there's also another way to do blogging, and that's to build your own. You need to have a domain name and you have to pay for it. Uh, GoDaddy's the one I've used, gosh, probably 10 to 15 years, so that's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, if other people are using other ones, again, send those to me. I'd like to increase this list. Once you find, once you get your domain name and you can set up uh, WordPress or some other blogging solutions that particular hosting company will have access to. Because not only do you need a domain, you need a place to host your website or your blog. The great thing about WordPress as well when you have your own domain. When you're using their website, it's called WordPress.com. When you install it on another hosting solution, it's WordPress.org. And they have different benefits, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, once you get it set up, how are you going to write? What's your space? You can go ahead and write in Word, um, but I found it can keep a lot of Word tags left over in your uh, blog posts. So then you have to deal with those or you have to ignore them. Um, recently, micro well, Microsoft's had a free tool uh, called Live Writer, and it's not perfect, but no free tools are perfect. And it's the uh, one of the features of uh, free tools. But recently, they made it open source, so now the community can help make it better. And it's called. You can go to it, OpenLiveWriter.org. That's the one that I use. Love is I can drop a picture on my post and when it uploads it to my website it shrinks it down to a smaller footprint which I think is wonderful. Um, a lot of, or I know WordPress provides a window for me to edit in um, but I find it a little constricting and I don't always blog on the internet. What other things that are very helpful? Well for me and there's probably many of you out there as well Spelling is difficult. I always say um, my best language is SQL. That's the one I write the best in, uh, not English, even though that's <laughs> I'm in America. Um, I have spelling challenges and grammar challenges. So one of the tools that I use is called Ginger. I actually found it for my daughter. Um, she'd been diagnosed with dyslexia. Can't get her to use it, but I use it all the time. Another technique is your friends. They are out there. You probably, for those people who are like me, that are so you have friends who are not. They're probably the ones that are always pointing out uh, your misspelled words. I use my daughter. Um, she is going to college next year as a journalism major, and so she's a wonderful person. She always tells me, I have no idea what you're talking about, Mom. Um, but these are the things that I found that you should probably correct. So uh, that gives her experience, and it also helps me out. I also have another friend uh, in Australia uh, named Ben, and he helps with the technical aspect of my blog, which is wonderful as well. Now, I personally really like to have images on my website. Uh, they might be code. They might be a diagram or they might just be a silly picture. So what are some screen capturing tools? Well, if you're on Word, there's Paint or Screen Capture. I personally uh, detest the screen capturing tool. So I found out last time I, I did this presentation of free tools. Um, one is called Jing by TechSmith. 
I checked it out the other day and I think I'm going to start using it. Unfortunately, I have paid already for the paid version called Snagit by TechSmith, but I won't always have access to that. Another one is LightShot. Now, if you like Chrome, I would highly recommend looking through their catalog of applications. They're constantly adding to it, and a lot of them are free, or they might have a trial, and you might just need it for the one blog post. Some other, um, if you want to pay, there, like I mentioned, Snagit and Ginger Software also has a paid version that you can actually download uh, onto your laptop. It also interacts with other websites and uh, Word, which is really nice. So, what does it take? Oh, before I go on, um, Howard, do we have any questions yet? Uh, uh, sorry, Becky, any questions at the moment? Okay, no worries. I got my coffee break. Okay. I'm a happy girl. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will interrupt as soon as I get one. Okay, okay. Um, how do we set them up? Well, there I have two different paths. So this is the path for setting up a free blog on a free hosting website like uh, WordPress.com. It is the easiest way. You get to pick your name. Um, it will be part of the free website. For instance, if I were doing it on WordPress, it would be MickeyStewie.WordPress.com. You create an account with them so that you can log in and log out. You get to pick a theme. I do, um, this is going to be your color scheme, how your layout occurs, and how people interact with your, web, uh, with your blog. Be careful of this. It's a time suck. Um, you might find that there's five different websites or 50 different websites with color schemes and layouts that you like. For your first blog, I recommend time make a time block um, or a time box so that you say, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes and I'm going to give myself three choices and then I'm going to pick one. That way you're not spending a lot of time because remember, you're here to blog and you can always change the theme. Uh, WordPress and Word, uh, WordPress for both .org and .com allow you to change your themes whenever you want. Um, they also give you the ability to tinker with the HTML, but that makes it harder to change the theme later on. You can then set up your pages and your menus. Uh, the pages are things like your help screen, uh, your contact page, uh, some resources. So you can set those up and put them in your menu. You're going to also want to set up your time zone. Since I'm in California, I have a Pacific time zone. So it is uh, 7.23 in the morning here. And then you can start blogging or the blog site because you just want MickeyStewie.com. Well, uh, I did that because of my OCD tendencies. I want to have a little bit more control over my environment. So you have a lot of the same steps, um, but then there's a few additional steps. For instance, you need to pay for your domain, so that's a, a monthly or a yearly charge. I find paying for a couple years at a time keeps the, the price lower. And then you also have to pay for the web hosting site. A lot of them are the domain that you purchase. The company also has a web hosting site. You can also pay for your domain and then go to some place like google.com to have your blog. What else do I have on here? Um, you, when you pay and you're using uh, something like the host, the web host solution for blogging or WordPress.com, you get to add all plugins. I would recommend only adding a couple and then blogging and then coming back in a couple of months. This uh, months. This is another area that is really a time suck because there's a lot of really cool features. Uh, for instance, um, adding comments. There's like 20, well, I'm probably exaggerating, 20 different plugins to put comments. So keep it simple and 
only do a couple at the beginning, and I'll talk about a few later on in my presentation. Everything else is the same on there. So let's take a look at an anatomy of a blog. This particular one, uh, and we're taking apart my personal blog. These are a list of menus. This is not what I first started with. I first started with home, resources, copyright, and about. The resources for me at that time was just a list of my favorite technical books so that I could share them with other people. Now these are downloaded scripts. Uh, any, I have a list of recorded presentations. For instance, this one will have a link to wherever Neil keeps the presentations he records. A uh, list of my presentations, for instance, the slide deck will occur, uh, be represented on my presentation list. But if you're not a speaker, you don't need this. Oh, I also put my favorite tools on a page so that other people can see uh, what I use. If you do like to create scripts that you want to share, I highly recommend the script library with um, zipped versions of the scripts. The reason for that is in your analytics, you can see how many downloads that you have. That I also see that on my presentations because that's another metric to see how well your blog is doing. I always put a simple copyright statement. Um, what I did is I went through a whole bunch of other people's copyrights and put mine together. Um, the ones that are really like the Phrasing, I talked to them and said, can I, can I use your copyright? And because I really liked it. You don't have to have it huge. People are going to use things from your website. Um, but personally, as long as they are giving me credit, I don't care if they're using my cop uh, things from my website. Another important one is about you. When I first did mine, I had two sentences. Basically, it said where I lived and uh, not specifically my city, but the general area and my title and what I wanted to blog on. Uh, that was it. You don't need to have a huge about page, especially if, if you're just starting out and you're not a speaker. Um, so you can just put a simple statement. I do find it frustrating when I go on blog posts and there's no name. I, I can't give them credit. I can't go on Twitter and thank them for the website that or the blog post that I really liked. So I encourage you to put your name. Um, if that makes you uncomfortable, you can put a pseudonym uh, that you can blog under. Uh, there's a lot of famous writers like Stephen King who started off that way. So what kind of things should you add? Sorry, Nikki. Yes. Sorry, Nikki. It's just a question from Karen, and she would like to know whether to name the blog my own name or choose a name representing the subject matter. What would you recommend? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I would keep it uh, generic because right now you might have a job where you're doing uh, data modeling, and then three years from now you're doing a job, uh, you're a DBA admin. And so you want to blog on that topic. So I wouldn't re recommend calling your blog, your first blog, you know, uh, data warehouse technical uh, documents. Um, if you go to my blog, I have, I think I call it something like SQL ponderings. Um, I made it very, very generic. Um, for the jewelry I was making and the art, and I was very happy that I called it uh, Mickey Designs uh, because I went from being a jewelry designer to being a glass artist. So keep it general. You could still include SQL Server or you can make it as general as it doesn't even have a tech name in it. So, you know, MickeySuey.com is what I call the website, but at the top of my blog I have a, a generic statement. So it's up to you on what you want to call it. Um, yeah. So that was a great question. Thank you. So a couple of components uh, or plugins that I would recommend. The first one is a search dialog box. That way as you accumulate blog posts, 
If someone is looking for something specific that they've read in the past, they can search for it. For instance, um, my third blog post was talking about mm -hmm. the, uh, something on the max function. So one of my most popular blog posts. So if someone is coming to look for it, they can put the word max in here and find it easily. I also recommend putting a place for them to subscribe for your blog. It might say that there's zero subscribers for a year, for two months, uh, for 10 days. It's okay. Eventually people are going to want to hear what you say and they're going to subscribe. The reason why I also like to include this is not everybody uses the RSS feeds. I don't. So there's a couple of blog posts that have a whole bunch of bloggers and I never get updates from them which frustrates me because I've tried to use the RSS feed and is I always forget about them. I also think you should include various ways for them to tell the community about your blogs. You don't have to use any of the uh, since one of these uh, is for Tumblr. I have a Tumblr account and things get sent to Tumblr, but I never that I never use it. But there are plenty of people who do. So that's a, a good one to use. And I highly recommend Twitter and LinkedIn um, because it the LinkedIn is a professional website and Twitter that we have a huge SQL community on Twitter. Tags are also very important. This is how currently the search engines find your posts to put them on, the, on their pages. For instance, if you type TC Goal Tuesday, which is a blogging party, you'll get a whole bunch of different websites who have included that as a tag. Now, if you'll notice, I do have some uh, other bloggers' names in here. I only recommend you to do that if you blog with them. Don't put uh, Mickey Stewie in here uh, because you heard a presentation uh, from me and you blogged about it. Uh, because that, to me, that's misleading because you are someone else's coattails. I happen to blog with, I think I have all four of them, Chris Yates, Jeffrey Verall, uh, who else is on here? Julie Cosmerano. We uh, blog together on the same topic. That's another way to get into the blogging community, find some of your blogging friends and blog together on a topic that you all pick. Your writing style. Have fun. That's probably the biggest thing. I make various themes for some of my Right, uh, some of my posts, I've done Star Wars, uh, The Matrix, Monty Python. I probably have a lot of Matrix and Monty Python quotes. Uh, for instance, I made one that started off, There is no spoon. Your titles, some of them I would recommend being technical if they're very important because that's another way the search engines find you. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You know, I have another one that talks about data modeling. So it, it can be very helpful to uh, choices for your titles. Now, the rest of this is a lot like the way you learn to write. Uh, having an introduction, having a discussion with some demos, the summary. So that's basically your standard body. I also like to break it up by little titles. Um, that's usually where I find my, my quotes from my favorite movies. And make sure that you give credit where credit is due. If you do pick a quote from another blog, a blogger or maybe from a class or a session that you've taken, put their name and put some ways for them, for other people to contact them. Uh, for instance, here I have a little B for their blog site and a little T for their Twitter handle. If they don't have any, then you can't include that and that's okay. You've still given them credit by putting their name. But the most important is be yourself and have fun. You will enjoy blogging a lot more if you're doing it. 
because you know as you start off blogging you're not going to have any followers so you're really doing it for yourself in fact this is my very first blog uh, back when I taught Visual Basic I always started with a message box so people felt like they would have an accomplishment early in the class and it always said hello world uh, some of you probably did this in college if you have a computer science background. So this was it. Uh, it was a very short paragraph, and it got my uh, feet in the water to start blogging. Okay, I'm going to take another coffee break. Hold on. Oh, good. That tasted really good. So let's take a look at one of my blog posts. This was um, one that I started off with. If you've never heard of T-SQL Tuesday, it's a wonderful way to get, your, um, get yourself going because there's a topic given and then everybody blogs on it. Go to Twitter to find it. The name will say T-SQL, the number two, and then the word Tuesday. That's the hashtag. The first Tuesday of the month, is when the invitation goes out and it'll specify the, the topic and who the host is. And then you have until the second Tuesday to write your blog. And the, sec the second Tuesday is when you're going to put your links with the hashtag T-SQL Tuesday out on Twitter. And then you'll also, uh, most people go to the host's website and put uh, the link to your, web your blog in the comments. They also ask for um, the T-SQL Tuesday uh, logo with a link back to the host's website so that they can get the list. So here I have the introduction um, with my top, the topic was data change. Now I'm still talking about the, the top portion. This is my way of having fun. I include little too with the blog posts. Uh, they're just there to bring some interest. All but the bacon are, are pictures that I took myself. So if you need a place to get pictures, I, there's a post on ProBlogger and they have 10 different sites that have free images. Uh, the Getty, which is a museum here in California, has a lot of historical pictures. So you can, if you want to tie it in to historical um, pictures, you can. I took one from there that had uh, a desk and some, some child from like the 60s who was writing at the desk when I did a blog post about writing. So now I get into the meat Sorry, of... Vicky? Yes, go ahead. One question um, from Melissa. She asks... How much experience do you need to have in the subject matter in order to blog about it? I'm fairly new to the SQL community. A particular problem that I don't see much about online that I would like to blog about, but I'm a little trepidatious. That is a wonderful question. There is always someone out there who knows less than you, and there's always someone out there who is researching the same question that you were researching and not finding anything or maybe wants to find a couple different versions of the same topic. I don't know if any of you do that, but whenever I find a solution to um, my problem, I go and find two other sites with, the, with similar solutions. I do that to make sure there's a consensus on what the answer is, uh, because not everybody blogs the correct answer. Uh, they might be basing it on an urban legend, uh, like no locks should be in everything. That is not a good technique. And so you might find another blog post that says that's not a good way to go, or finds the edge case also experiencing to actually use the no lock. So definitely blog. Um, as a new SQL user, you might even do one like I did a few weeks ago. I was unfamiliar with Azure and I wanted to try it out. So I had uh, three blogs called My Adventures in Learning Azure and I blogged about it. 
I talked about the problems I experienced setting it up because I was doing it on my own. I talked about research that I found to solve problems. And having a multi-part blog post is another way to get the same people to come back to your blog because they want to see what the end result is, just like uh, your favorite drama on TV or comedy show. So great question. So here's the meat of my particular blog post. Um, and this is a continuation of the previous slide. And I included some code. There is a, a plugin that you can use. Uh, this is actually highlightable code that someone could copy and then paste into SSMS. So that's a wonderful way to share code. Um, there are some others where I've done a picture. kind of depends on what I'm blogging on. Um, but this is a way to help prove your hypothesis that you're working on for your blog post. This is another way of writing. Um, I wanted to write about my experience the, at the summit where it was the first time I presented. And I didn't sit still, as you can see here. So I did a timeline. I found on Chrome um, an app that would allow me to create all these bubbles and type them in. And then I copied my image and I pasted it in here. You, I've also did it on a way so that you can think of topics. So I can't right now. I can't think of what those are called. But um, this is another way to show your data for your blog. Finally, I do a summary. For all my T-SQL Tuesday posts, I, you, I say thanks for all the fish. Um, some people say that's morbid because that's when the world explodes in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but I, I just love that quote. It's one of my favorites. So here I summarized what I was talking about at the beginning. And this is a lot like a writing class, but remember, it's your writing style. So you don't have to go up uh, and look in the English book and uh, or whatever language you speak in and, or write in and do it exactly like it shows you. But this is a great way to summarize what people are, uh, what your blog post was about, especially if it's a long one. So. What thing um, simple or maybe complex, depending on, on where you are in your career. Um, and like I said, there's always someone who needs your knowledge. Uh, solutions. Uh, I was told by my mentor, because I, I found someone who would mentor me when I first started. Um, well, I was kind of about four years into my kind of my SQL aspect of my career. Um, but I asked for a mentor to help me become better because I didn't really know where I was. Was I um, a medium person when you, you line everybody with SQL knowledge or was I still a beginner or was I closer to being an expert? And so I, I asked for a mentor. And I asked him, what should I blog on? And he said, well, everybody should know how to do backups. So write something on how you do a backup. Unfortunately, I wasn't an admin, and I was really new to writing, uh, to doing backups because I usually had a DBA. I can do it in my sleep, and I eventually wrote a post. I talked about T-SQL Tuesday. Another way to do it is to make your blog post like a diary and capture the solutions that you want to remember. Because one of the most gratifying things is when you go search for a problem you've forgotten that you knew how to do, and it pulls up your own blog posts. It's like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. So um, you could do that kind of like a diary. And writing about conferences is another great thing to do because it encourages other people to go to those conferences when they find out that they learned quite a bit. Or maybe you didn't like the conference, and so you, you want to tell people that as well. But do that in a gentle way. Um, I did go to a conference before I was blogging, and I had a horrible 
at time there was no one networking there, which is one of the things I love to go do at conferences. And the sessions were all day. And uh, that was not a good conference for me. If you want, you know, one of the broad topics of this particular presentation is, is how to get more women into the tech space. So you might decide that you want to write some blogs, uh, blog posts or dedicate your blog to ideas on how women could overcome their challenges in the tech space or how they can get into the tech space so as a very, you know, a beginner or maybe they're high schoolers trying to figure out should I go into this space for college. Um, top 10 ways. That's a wonderful way to bring people in. They like lists. So maybe you have top 10 ways to write your where statement or top three ways to use uh, user-defined functions the correct way. So those are great things to blog about. 15 minutes of fame. This is how you get your blogs out to get people interested. Now we, we talked about having ways to get your blog post out there so people know uh, that you've blogged, but this is the way that you want to uh, send it out. Mondays are usually the best way because people are at work and they start off their day uh, reading a blog post. Because I'm in California, I also want to capture the European audience. So I set my blog post up to go out at 6 in the morning. And then sometimes when I remember, I'll put another uh, tweet out there so that it captures the, the, you know, the Californians who are still sleeping. Um, so they're aware of my blog post as well. Um, one of the things that I found very helpful, and you'll see this on my page about analytics, is blogging right after I speak. And if I, I would see a little bump go up because people in the presentation that I gave go and look at my uh, website. Um, and then I talked about attending a conference. Where do, where's the, the best place to get out that information? Uh, I used to have MySpace crossed out. I don't know why it's not crossed out right now. Um, so that one was in there as a joke because I'm not sure MySpace exists anymore. There's a, a plethora of places that you can send the links out. One of the cool play, cool things uh, with, on WordPress is they give the way to send out all of the messages without having to go to each social media to put my website. So I joined all of these and um, the ones that are on the right. And so when I send out my blog post, it goes to all of them. And I can also say it's going to go out at a, just the next day or maybe you know two days from now because it's two day it's Saturday when you're writing, so you can set the date and the time. You can farther if I go farther down, I can include my tags. Here, I in my custom message, I've included hashtags if I want to get to the general. Pub, uh, public, I put the SQL Server. If I want to send it out to the PASS community, I'll put hashtag SQL PASS. There's also other ones for SSIS, uh, Azure, so you can go and find what hashtags will go directly to the audience you're talking to. And here are some common hashtags to put. So the person who asked earlier because they were newer to the SQL community, Putting new blogger or entry level is a great way to get people who are also new to the SQL community uh, finding your posts. There's actually uh, right now, I think it was uh, Tim for other people to do some entry level blog posts. And so entry level, that's where the hashtag came from. Once you start blogging, 
you're going to want to look at your analytics. There's uh, Google Analytics is a great place to register your website or your blog because it'll gather all the metrics that are out there collecting. Now this huge bump um, that you see on the left, that was after I did a presentation for Pragmatic Works. And the other one is either a presentation or after I got back from Summit. Um, this particular one is comparing 2015 to 2014. And you can see that I've had a lot more growth. But I started blogging in 2012. The first couple years, I only had 20 people reading my blog with no one reading it on the weekends. And I had that for a very long time. So in that, it's OK that you don't have a lot of people. First time, I had it skyrocket. I, I kind of did a little happy dance because that was the first time that that happened. Another metric that I like to use is looking for the list of new visitors compared to returning visitors. And for a long time, it was at 25% new uh, reoccurring visitors. And now I've grown it to 36% in 2015. So that made me really happy. It's great to have those returning visitors because um, they really like what you're doing. And they keep coming back. So I, I happen to love that. There's another really cool metric that they show on uh, the Google Analytics, and it's a world map. And you can see which country that you have a lot of followers. Um, being that I'm an American, I get a lot of America ones. But I also have a huge presence in India. I, I don't know why, um, but I do. And that, that's pretty cool. Dreaded criticisms. This is probably why you've been putting off blogging. I know it was why I was putting off blogging. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Who cares what they're going to say? You're doing this for yourself, and you're doing this to inspire other people that want to hear what you have to say. So the bad criticisms. This is where the people are going to want to point out that they also have a blog post. And or theirs might be better. You want to ignore those because, OK, somebody else blogged on that topic. That's fine. You wanted to blog on it, too. Those are comments you may not want to show on your blog posts, or you may want to write back to them and thank them for sharing their blog posts. Um, I didn't talk about the comments section. You can have the ability for people to put comments. I don't recommend having them automatically up here uh, criticism that you don't want on your blog post, as well as spam. Definitely get a spam blocker for your comments. Otherwise, it's just like your email where you get all that junk mail that has nothing to do with you. You're just being spammed. Um, by all of those really bad emails like, please send me money uh, because I'm destitute. You don't want those on your blog posts. And I have one. Um, my junk mail stopper <laughs> it, it has got like 60,000 uh, blocks to my website. The other reason why I like to take a look at the comments before I put them out is someone might include their email. Hi, I'm really having trouble with this. Can you email me back so that I can talk to you about it? Well, I don't want them to get spammed from my email. So I will edit the post and then I'll put it, I'll put the comment out on my blog. The criticisms that are annoying are the ones where you get the people that have to correct spelling and grammar. Um, that was actually why I put off for a year from blogging. I had someone that I was working with. I had been working with him for 20 years. And he always had to correct my spelling and my grammar. That actually made me a better writer. But I didn't want him to do that on my blog because I'm blogging to get technical information out. I don't 
care if it's not perfect because I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it to share technical information. So sometimes when I really get something wrong, uh, especially if it's a technical concept, I'll go back and fix it or I'll leave it in the comments because someone has uh, maybe corrected the solution and then I'll thank them. Finally, the ones that you really want to remember are the ones that are praise. Thank you so much for blogging this. I've been searching for a week and I couldn't find it. Uh, the other ones that I love are the people that are kind of the, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, the people that are famous in the community and they came and read your blog and they told you it was a wonderful post. Those are one of my favorites as well. Now if you kind of get down and out and you want some places to get quotes that kind of inspire, inspire you again, um, take a look at the blog called Positively Blog. Um, they are trying to sell classes, so you will see that in there. But they also have wonderful quotes and wonderful posts that kind of make me happy and go, okay, I messed this post up. That's okay. I'm going to keep going. And there we go. Slide. That was it. So, to summarize it, we talked about some of the reasons why we want to blog, and then I went through different tools for you to start blogging as well as some blogging ideas. So, as my little pop-up says, you've got this, go get them, it, start with a topic, and just go for it. Oh, one of the other things for topics, if you solve a problem at work, send yourself an email or create um, use a website that helps you create lists so that you can remember to blog on it later. That's another thing that I do. So I wanted to show some resources. These are the various websites that I found my statistics on. If you want to go to them, these are all links. Again, I will give this presentation to Neil and Howard, as well as I'll put it on my website. This is, um, there's a post called a writer's toolkit um, that I talked about, oh, 12 ways to increase engagement through visual content. I really like that post. And ProBlogger, I would recommend um, signing up to get that one. They give a lot of great ideas on how to improve your blog posts. Uh, some of them are about getting money, um, but I'm, I'm not doing this to generate money. I'm doing this to share with the community. Are there any additional comments, Howard? Uh, yes, there is one from uh, Katrine, and she said, thank you so much, Mickey, for everything that you presented. Oh, you're welcome. Um, here's some contact, uh, contact information. Uh, feel free to email me. I don't always get back to the questions right away. kind of depends on what's going on with work and if I have uh, presentations that weekend or if I've committed a blog post to somebody. And in fact, if you want to send me your first blog post link, I'll, I'll tweet about it. I'd be happy to do that. So. Um, I want you to be encouraged. I hope this is encouraging to you and so that you can get that first blog post out there. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, there's several things that I tweet about besides technical things. I'm a huge whiskey connoisseur, so I, I tweet about whiskey, um, my dog, and my children. So um, you'll have to bear with me on my personal tweets, but I do like to tweet about um, blog posts that I found interesting. Uh, for instance, if you send me your first blog post, I'll, I'll tweet about that. So we are done with the presentation. Uh, thank you for having me. I, I really enjoy presenting for people, and I hope I've encouraged you to start blogging. So back to you, Neil and Howard. So thank you, Mickey. 
Thank you very much, Mickey. Welcome. That was a fantastic presentation. Uh, we, I really enjoyed it. I, it gives me some ideas for some of the blogging I need to get on and do. Uh, when I find, oh, good. When I find less sleep, more blogging, I think, is the idea um, from today. So I have to carry on with that. I'm going to be posting up the recording for the session um, shortly after this, so I'll get it up and running. And for those who don't know, we have our YouTube channel. I'm just going to make myself presenter. And here we have our YouTube channel. So we post up there. There's all the other sessions that we've recently done. You can go and watch the recordings for as well. So Mickey's will be up there within a couple of hours from uh, this session now. I'm just going to stop the recording.